Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how to solve one variable first degree inequalities. So in your notebook, please put down today's subtitle, which is Solving One Variable First Degree Inequalities. Solving one variable first degree inequalities is extremely easy because it's largely very similar to solving regular equations. So, as an example, suppose I ask you to solve the following inequality. What is the value of x in 3x plus 9 greater than or equal to 0? Well, for the most part, solving x involves the same procedures as you would employ in a regular equation. So we start with the expression 3x plus 9 greater than or equal to 0. To isolate x, use the same techniques as in a regular equation. So moving the 9 over to the other side of the in equal sign, we get 3x bigger than or equal to negative 9. And then dividing both sides by 3, we isolate the x, thereby giving us x is larger than or equal to negative 3. So as you can see, for the most part, it is pretty much identical to solving a regular equation. However, here's where you'll notice one of the biggest differences, how we state our final solution. Our final solution is not just a single solution. It is a whole range of solutions. In this case, x has to be bigger than or equal to negative 3. So, to state our final solution, we can simply write that x has to be an element of anything from negative 3 included all the way to positive infinity. Why don't you try one on your own? Suppose for your next example I gave you the following. Solve for x in the inequality 2x subtract 8 has to be smaller than 20. Go ahead, pause the video, and try it now. All right, let's see how you guys did. So we have the expression 2x subtract 8 has to be smaller than 20. Moving the 8 over to the other side of the unequal sign, we have 2x smaller than 28. And then dividing both sides by 2, we get that x has to be smaller than 14. And don't forget to give a proper conclusion. The solution to this inequality is anything smaller than 14. And we can use our interval notation to write that x has to be an element of negative infinity all the way to 14, not including 14. For the next example, I'd like to highlight one very, very dangerous spot when trying to handle inequalities. So, for example, please put the following. Solve for x in the inequality, negative 2x plus 3 has to be bigger than or equal to 15. So, as usual, we'll begin with our expression. Negative 2x plus 3 has to be bigger than or equal to 15. Moving the 3 to the other side to the inequal symbol, we have negative 2x bigger than or equal to 12. And here is a critical point. We're going to end up dividing both sides by negative 2. When it comes to inequalities, whenever you divide or multiply by a negative number, you must always remember to the, the following. Dividing both sides by negative 2 will give us x. And here's the critical point. We must switch the direction of the unequal symbol. And 12 divided by negative 2 gives us negative 6. Therefore, a proper conclusion gives us that the solution to this inequality is where x has to be an element of anything from negative infinity 
all the way to negative 6 included. At this stage, the big question on your mind should be, why switch direction when multiplying or dividing by a negative number? Well, the explanation is actually pretty easy. Suppose I give you a statement that's true. So let's say the statement that the number 6 is bigger than 2. I think most people would agree that 6 is bigger than 2, so this statement is actually true. Now, suppose that I multiply both sides by negative 2. Well, that will give us negative 12 bigger than negative 4. But this statement is now false. Because negative 12 is certainly not bigger than negative 4. So, the easiest thing to fix this statement is to simply switch direction, which will give us negative 12 smaller than negative 4. The flipping directions of the unequal symbol turns the statement true, because negative 12 is certainly smaller than negative 4. Alright, let's try another example, but this time, let's try an inequality that is sandwiched between two numbers. So our example is the following. Solve for x in the inequality. When will 2x plus 4 be bigger than 10, but smaller than or equal to 14? The procedure to isolate x will be identical as in the previous examples. The only thing that's different will be that our procedure will be applied to both sides of the unequal symbols at the same time. So let's begin. Our original expression states that 2x plus 4 has to be bigger than 10 and has to be smaller than or equal to 14. So moving the 4 to the other side of both of the unequal signs will give us 6 and then 2x and then on the other side we have 10 and then finally dividing by 2 on both sides at the same time will give us that x has to be bigger than 3 and at the same time has to be smaller than or equal to 5 so being sure to write a proper conclusion gives us that the solution for this inequality is that x has to be an element of the domain which goes from 3 excluded all the way to 5 included. Alright, the final example of this lesson is for you to try on your own. So, the final example is the following. Solve for x in the inequality negative 2x minus 4 has to be bigger than or equal to 12 but smaller than 16. Go ahead, pause the video, and try it now. Alright, let's see how you guys did. Starting with the original expression, we have that negative 2x minus 4 has to be bigger than or equal to 12 but smaller than 16. Moving the negative 4 over to both sides at the same time gives us 16 and then negative 2x and then on the right side we have 20. At this stage you are preparing to divide both sides by negative 2 at the same time. Be careful here. Don't forget the danger of dividing or multiplying by a negative number in an inequality you must remember to switch the direction of the unequal symbols. In this case, we have two unequal symbols to switch. So dividing both sides by negative 2 will give us that x has to be bigger than negative 10, 
but smaller than or equal to negative 8. And being sure to write a proper conclusion gives us that the solution is the following. x has to be an element of the domain which goes from negative 10 excluded all the way to negative 8 included. And that's all there is, ladies and gentlemen, to solving one variable first-degree inequalities.